there are three different types of t-tests. The one sample t-test, the independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test. When do we use a one sample t-test? We use the one sample t-test when we want to compare the mean of a sample with a known reference mean. Example, a chocolate bar manufacturer claims that its chocolate bars weigh an average of 50 grams. To check this, we take a sample of 30 bars and weigh them. The mean value of this sample is 48 grams. Now we can use a one sample t-test to check if the mean of 48 grams is significantly different from the claimed 50 grams. When do we use the independent samples t-test? We use the t-test for independent samples when we want to compare the means of two independent groups or samples. We want to know if there is a significant difference between these means. Example. We would like to compare the effectiveness of two painkillers. We randomly divide 60 people into two groups. The first group receives drug A and the second group receives drug B. Using an independent t-test, we can now test whether there is a significant difference in pain relief between the two drugs. When we use the paired samples t-test? We use the paired samples t-test to compare the means of two dependent groups. Example, we want to know how effective a diet is. To do this, we weigh 30 people before the diet and then weigh exactly the same people after the diet. Now we can look at the difference in weight between before and after for each subject. We can now use a paired samples t-test to test whether there is a significant difference. In a paired sample, the measurements are available in pairs. The pairs result, for example, from repeated measurements with the same people. Independent samples are made up of people and measurements that are independent of each other. Here's an interesting note. The paired samples t-test is very similar to the one sample t-test. We can also think of the paired samples t-test as having one sample that was measured at two different times. We then calculate the difference between the paired values, giving us a value for one sample. The difference is once minus 5, once plus 2, once minus 1 and so on and so forth. Now we want to test whether the mean value of the difference just calculated deviates from a reference value, in this case zero. This is exactly what the one sample t-test does. What are the assumptions for a t-test? Of course we first need a suitable sample. In the one sample t-test we need a sample and the reference value. In the independent t-test we need two independent samples and in the case of a paired t-test, a paired sample. The variable for which we want to test whether there is a difference between the means must be metric. Examples of metric variables are age, body weight and income. For example, a person's level of education is not a metric variable. In addition, the metric variable must be normally distributed in all three t-test variants. In case of an independent t-test, the variances in the two groups must be approximately equal. You can check whether the variances are equal using Levine's test. For more information, watch my video on Levine's test. So, what are the hypotheses of the t-test? Let's start with the one sample t-test. In the one sample t-test, the null hypothesis is the sample mean is equal to the given reference value. So there is no difference and the alternative hypothesis is the sample mean is not equal to the given reference value. What about the independent samples t-test? In the independent t-test the null hypothesis is the mean values in both groups are the same. So there is no difference between the two groups. And the alternative hypothesis is the mean values in both groups are not equal. So there is a difference between the two groups. 
And finally, the paired samples t-test. In a paired t-test, the null hypothesis is the mean of the difference between the pairs is zero. And the alternative hypothesis is the mean of the difference between the pairs is not zero. But how do we calculate a t-test? To do this, we first calculate the t-value. To calculate the t-value, we need two values. First, we need the difference between the means and then we need the standard deviation from the mean. This is also known as the standard error. In the one sample t-test, we calculate the difference between the sample mean and the known reference mean. S is the standard deviation of the collected data and n is the number of cases. S divided by the square root of n is then the standard deviation from the mean, which is the standard error. In the dependent samples t-test, we simply calculate the difference between the two sample means. To calculate the standard error, we need the standard deviation and the number of cases from the first and second sample. Depending on whether we can assume equal or unequal variance for our data, there are different formulas for the standard error. Read more about this in our tutorial on datadep.net. In a paired sample t-test, we only need to calculate the difference between the paired values and calculate the mean from that. The standard error is then the same as for a one sample t-test. So what have we learned so far about the t-value? No matter which t-test we calculate, the t-value will be greater if we have a greater difference between the means. And the t-value will be smaller if the difference between the means is smaller. Further, the t-value becomes smaller when we have a larger dispersion of the mean. So, the more scattered the data, the less meaningful a given mean difference is. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.